are theories about going to the gym. That makes sense. <laughs> no, it's like it's like you can actually get big without going to the gym. That's some bullshit. What no, the fuck? There's no, no there's no, no way you can no. there's no way you can build muscle not going to the gym. No, no, and there's what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Trust me, trust me, I'll tell you. And this is a way that you don't even have to leave your couch, Brody. Shut up. I promise you, I promise you. So listen, listen. Are you doing like crunches in the fucking No 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 listen listen? So scientists actually prove that your brain can convince your body that you're actually getting stronger. And you're the you always talk about your brain, it's all about mindset, all about mindset. Oh, oh so like it will help you or it can build. It can actually build. No, it can. Listen, listen. And so shout out the Cleveland um Cleveland Clinic. They ran a study on 10 people and they told them to imagine themselves doing bicep curls. So this, they're not doing it. So they're just thinking about it? They're thinking hard about it, right? And they told them to do at least 20 to 30 five times a week. Just imagine on your couch. Bicep curls. What the? What? No way. And listen, There's listen. no way. And the study shows that they grow muscle by 13.7%, fam. Who's so, doing so this no, study, bro? Even, no, scientists, fam. This is not <laughs> this is not fake. For real? This is not bullshit. This is I like I searched this up. So you can you're you're telling me you can like think. Mm -hmm. You can like daydream like lifting weights. Yeah, you have to just think it and then you will grow. You'll grow muscle. So shall everyone For out real? there just do it 13. I mean, do okay, let's say uh if you want to grow abs, yeah. just pretend you're doing sit-ups. Do that. Do 20, 30 sit-ups. Imagine for five times a week. Do that for months and months. And I Yo, bet- Yo, this guy said imagine working out. I know. <laughs> uh, I bet you guys will grow abs. You're welcome. Shout out me. <laughs> what? Yeah. You're, you're dead ass. Yeah, I'm dead ass. They're, I'm telling you, Cleveland Clinics did a study on 10 people. 13.7. That, that might There's be numbers. like the stupid, like it sounds <laughs> crazy though. Yeah, yeah, it, it sounds does. crazy. It sounds it crazy. Does. But it makes sense. It makes sense in the sense of like, Oh, I can I can believe something for yeah. it to happen. Yeah. Cause I know some people they can think about things with their body and all of a sudden they can grow bigger. Yeah. Like um, for example, Emson. Yeah. Remember when Emson was on the podcast? He said, as long as I was little, like when he was little, yeah, like, I'm gonna be tall. I'm gonna be tall. Oh and yeah, he, yeah. And he grew tall. Yeah, that's what I said. Like you you're the number one thing about that. Um what manifestation. Is, manifestation <laughs> yeah. is that is all manifestation. <laughs> that is manifestation, but that's like a weird level to it. Cause it's like the physical, literally. Yeah, because how well when you get sick, how do you not get sick you just tell your mind oh no so that's true that, that's true th that's on a bigger scale low-key than getting thing than getting like, is it big. no because because look look the uh, way the way i think that works is okay. because i feel like you can tell your antibodies like yo i think i'm gonna get sick right now okay you guys better like isn't that same as oh i can tell my muscles you guys are getting bigger like what is really i don't know bro because <laughs> muscles is different you have to like tear the fibers no mm, i don't know man <laughs> that's nah that's weird that's weird <laughs> Someone test that out for us. I'm gonna just go to sleep, pretend I'm like pressing. <laughs> no, but you actually can't take it as like a joke. You have to be serious about it. True. That's that's all me? manifestation. Yeah, though. exactly. All, yo, I was just chopping up with John last night actually, oh, yeah. and he was telling me. Is he me, back in Canada? <laughs> yeah, he's back. In, yeah, he's okay. back. He's back. He's back just now. <laughs> this guy actually left Canada. That's actually so like. That he's blows smart my though. He left because of war. I like, know, but that's so dramatic, bro. Like, okay. No, it, it, okay, hold on, hold on. Let, let's talk. Let's talk about John real quick. <laughs> if you're in John's position, I, I'm I'm a, I'm a, I'm a ride for my dog real quick. Yeah. If you're in his position and you have a safe house mm -hmm. out of this country, yeah, that's not a threat or that's not like a target yeah. for the war. Why not? <laughs> I guess. Why not? Dip, I guess. Right. I guess. But that's like me. Okay, going to the Philippines. There's nothing for me to do in the Philippines. Because you know when um, immigrants move to Canada, mm -hmm. there's no point if you make money now here. There's no no point moving back. Because why Are would you, you go back to to your hometown when where you were? When well, you have the a weather, life here? bro. Because we're in Canada, we're in Canada, okay. and our weather's kind of shit. Yeah, but you still have many more opportunities in Canada than back home. Because the, the main thing in Philippines, the doctors have to redo school because there's no true. opportunities in the Philippines. No, that's true. You feel me? That's true. But I think I think it's it's just a sense of like belongingness. Oh, like home. Yeah, because. I remember I, I talked to an Uber driver. Mm -hmm. He was from, I think he's from Sri Lanka. Yeah. And he asked me like, oh, were you born here? And I said, yeah. yeah, I was born here. He said, no matter where you go, right here, this this is home. This is like home. Canada. You're going you're gonna to move. Yeah, you're going to yeah. move. You're going to go different places. But he said, I promise you, mm -hmm. you'll come back here. Yeah, I was just going to ask you, do you, in the future, do you feel like you're going to move out of Toronto? I don't know. Yeah. I don't even know. I can't think that far. I, I can't yeah. think that far. <laughs> like, I want to, I want to, I used to say like, oh yeah, that'd be sick, yeah, right? Yeah. I used I to can't. always believe that, but I don't know anymore. I can't even uh, imagine moving out my mom's house right now. Really? I'm saving so much money for his bless. Yeah? Yeah. No, but it, it, it's good to save money and it's good to not spend. Yeah. But I think one day, mm -hmm. maybe one day I just, I just want some, um, some, something different. No, I just want like, um, independence, independence. Oh, okay. Oh no, obviously I'm going to move out my mom's house. Like, later on but like yeah i'm talking about country-wise you know what's crazy uh -huh. it used to be like a big stigma like you have to move out of your parents house 
when you're when you're what twenty something like that. Is it now? Like long no long time ago. I'm talking okay, a long yeah. time ago. But now it's nothing like that because especially in Toronto because the yes. the real estate price is crazy. Oh my goodness! Who's that TikToker on um the bad one? You you shout out you. Oh the the real estate <laughs> so the real fire. estate. She gets she gets so much hate because she's like oh you're just selling your body you're not so hey man but at the same time if you have that type wait of body, she's selling her body why what do you mean no because like whenever she does like she shows off the house yeah you know how she has like. She looks good, like period. Oh, so she's like, she's like yeah, walking she's around the house with her big booty. <laughs> <laughs> but you can't blame her. It's like the Hooters thing. She probably gets more sales that way. That's what I'm yeah, saying. And I'm not good. blaming her. It's fire. Keep doing your thing. <laughs> I think, yo, have you seen Kanye's like um his project he wants to work on? Which like one? a civilization with these like modern homes, mini homes. It's like domes and shit. No, no, no. You never heard of that? Yo, so it? so me. it's pretty much like a community. So rather than like these huge houses yeah. and it's very unsustainable, it's still sustainable, but not not to this level mm -hmm. it's pretty much like these domes solar powered mm. um very minimalistic so you have yeah. everything you need uh a washroom bathroom mm. um cooking essentials okay. water all of that yeah. and bedroom Jeez. and look at a man like him bro mm -hmm. imagine you're at that level yeah. where you can have your own community technically you like your own country of all these people living there yeah like honestly i would kind of want to live there for a little bit yeah, too at the, at the same time first you know everyone, yeah. So you're you're picking and choosing who's in your community, mm -hmm. and even still, even still, like it could just be his supporters, yeah. Bro, imagine you have like, let's say, two hundred people that are ride for you, dude. <laughs> There's no living in that Yo, community. You know how one of the biggest things when you're you're choosing your community is like the crime rates. Yeah. No crime rates in Kanye's because they all love him. Yeah. <laughs> They're probably like neighbors and shit. Like I don't even know my neighbors like that. But I think the biggest issue though about that, yeah, it's like. Do they have Amazon Prime though? What do you mean? <laughs> they need Amazon Prime, bro. I feel like I feel like that's oh, the biggest thing. Yeah, they should have. Cause I was I was in when I was in Bahamas, I was looking at like all the houses. Yeah. Like it would be nice to live here, but how, how am I gonna get like a USB? <laughs> you know what oh, I mean? Yeah, how am I gonna get like cause here I think we take it for granted, especially how? in North America. Yeah. Amazon Prime, boom. Yeah. Same day shipping, get whatever you want. Same day shipping is crazy. I don't. I right? still don't know how that's possible. Same day shipping, and you yeah. don't have to leave the house. That's crazy. I know. We take a lot of things for granted, bro. Yeah, and you can even get like groceries shipped. Mm. All of that, bro. Yeah, all of that. Gro no, that's new though, right? Because groceries, we didn't have. We what wasn't like a thing until twenty twenty one. No, no, but but they had like milkman. Milkman. Oh yeah, that's true. Whatever happened to milkman? How come, how come there's no such thing as milkman anymore? I actually don't know. That's a, that's a great question, you know? <laughs> yeah. You know what that reminded me of? So, you know Pillsbury Doughboy? Yeah. Do you know the Mandela effect for that? That just randomly oh, the, the, came to my mind. Oh, there's a Mandela effect for yeah, that? Yeah, so you know how the button on the top of his chef's hat is blue? Yeah. His eyes are blue and his scarf is blue. You remember that? Is it blue? Yeah. Yeah, no, it's not. That, what is the it? The Mandela effect is that it's actually white. I thought it was black. I thought it was red. Whoa, what the yeah, hell? Yeah, I thought it was red, like the red uh, for Pillsbury Doughboy. You're probably from Earth like five. I'm from <laughs> <Right>? Earth three. <laughs> that just proves it, fam. But what no, it's actually white. So there's, it doesn't even look like he has a bow tie on him or like a, a ribbon on him. His eyes are white too? No, his eyes are blue. Does he have a chef's hat still? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> if, you had, if you didn't have a chef's hat and he was just bald like Caillou, then we have a problem, <laughs> fam. A so problem. <laughs> you sounded so good. You're like, yo, please tell me he has a chef's hat. I'm going into Okay, okay, look, look, look. Right, right, right. So I found the craziest Mandela effect, bro. Okay. This shit, this shit pissed me off so much because I still, I'm actually concerned now, bro. I'm okay. actually concerned. That. So backstory, real quick. Backstory, okay, real backstory. quick. My dad, his mm. favorite pop drink was what? Coca Cola, right? Okay, yeah, that's. And he would always have it on the table eating dinner, or whatever. And I always yeah. look at it because like I'm bored, or whatever. Yeah. Looking at the logo. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm gonna show you a picture. Okay. Tell me which logo you remember. Which logo I remember? The the one with the dash. With the right? dash, right? Yeah, with the yeah. dash. For me, it's the squiggly dash. Huh? For me, it's the squiggly dash, <laughs> right? Is? But the real one no, is no, this no, shit. No, what the no, fuck no. is this shit, bro? Yo, that's, that's the real that's the real Coca-Cola logo. The dot? Yes. What the fuck? Is that I a, never remembered that. No, there's that there, it's a dash, fam. There was never like a There was dot. never a it's like an apostrophe or whatever. <laughs> there's no way. If it's like an apostrophe, you read it Coca, and then there's a pause, which is a dash. Yes. Cola. Yes. But I remember I remember with the squiggly line. I what? feel like that just flows better. It looks right. Yeah. But but this <laughs> it's like what is this? <laughs> nah, nah, that doesn't make any sense. What is that? That's actually real. Like if we yes, took look, out, look. if we took out a Coca Cola right now, like if we we'll, we'll Google someone. we'll Google Coca Cola right now. What? Look, look, look. Everywhere, everywhere. Boom. Let me see. Let me see. Boom. That doesn't look right, bro. Oh shit, you're right. What that doesn't look fuck? right. <laughs> nah, nah. It doesn't look right. Nah. <laughs> nah. I'm cheating. No, 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 no. 
Hundred percent, hundred percent. This is not the same reality. Damn. <laughs> no, that's actually weird. What? We we change realities. Wait, is so Kit Kat? You know how it has a dash, right? Or am I tripping? I think so. Okay, yeah, that that should be proper. Kit Kat. <laughs> we gotta we gotta make sure now. We gotta yeah. make sure now. We check that has a circle. <laughs> Some bullshit. It's like a star. No, nah, Coca Cola is crazy. I've seen. It doesn't have a dash, bro. No, no. It doesn't have a dash. Okay, what? <laughs> what? It doesn't have a dash, man. Okay, maybe that was me just tripping, but I swear there was a dash. I remember a dash too. Yeah. Okay, I think I remember a dash too. Hey, man, we're on the same level right now. We're on the same planet. Yo, speaking of chocolate, though. Yeah. I always had. I had. I had this theory, right? Okay. <laughs> it's kind of a stupid theory, but. It, what? Okay, I'm, I'm gonna tell you this. You ever heard of the Nest? Quick theory. You ever no. heard of the Nest Quick theory? Nest Quick, no. Okay, let me put you on, bro. Okay. So, hold on. I don't even need my phone for this one. I don't even need my okay. phone for this one. Okay. Nest Quick, yeah. right? What is the mascot for Nest Quick? The bunny, right? Am I the bunny? The bunny, okay, right? Okay. What color is the bunny? Is like a white and like I think it has like blue in it. White and blue, no. Yeah, and pink. White, blue, and pink. Oh, it's like a brown bunny, bro. Huh? Oh, Nest Quick oh, is Nest a brown Quick. bunny. Oh, okay. Nest Quick. I'm thinking about uh, the the white ch the Twix white or whatever. Yeah, tricks. yeah, Twix, yeah, Twix, yeah. Twix, yeah. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> I'm talking about uh, Nest Quick. Yeah, Nest okay. Quick. The brown bunny. The brown bunny. The brown bunny. Yeah. Now Nest Quick cereal, okay. right? Nest Quick cereal. What shape is the Nest Quick cereal? It's like little spheres, right? Like yeah, balls, yeah, like balls, ball, like yeah. brown balls. balls. Now. <laughs> When a bunny poos, <laughs> what is the shape of a bunny's poo? What, a circle? Bro, but because I had pet bunnies before. Yeah. I don't oh, know how it only clicked to my head now, bro. But bunny poo comes out in perfect circles. Oh, yeah. Like balls. Yeah. So it makes sense that Nesquik cereal <laughs> is, is has bunny shaped poo cereal, bro. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's <laughs> why. Do they advertise it like that? No, they don't, right? They don't. They don't. That's smart. Because why would you want to advertise poo? Because if you think about it, look, Lucky Charms, it, it's shaped yeah, different. It's shaped, shaped like different. Mm -hmm. Yo, tricks. Also a bunny. What is it? Tricks also a bunny. And what shape is the cereal? What Spears is it? Spears and balls, bro. Because it's also a bunny, so it's it's, it's balls, fam. Oh, I thought it Tricks. was like, I thought it's, it was balls. mini. I thought it was mini. In my head, I thought it was mini rectangles. No, 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 no. Because I was like, that's some uh, like apple, apple jacks. Apple oh, jacks. Apple jacks. I'm, I'm tripping. I'm tripping. A apple jacks, but it's it's different shapes. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? It's different shape. Look at um all of these other cereals. Yeah. Frosted Flakes, different shape. Mm -hmm. Like Captain Crunch, different shape. But Nesquik is very interesting. They chose yeah. the spear. And you know um how you tr uh, oh you know how you put milk yeah. in the mask quick and it turns the pooey color <laughs> <laughs> yo we're on we're I'm on to them yeah, we're on to them we're on the to poo them. spreads to the milk ew, ew. <laughs> yo someone who's eating cereal right now my fault man we're just ruining everything right no now. but it, it, it's it's one of those stupid like little theories but yeah. i bet you i guarantee you yeah. someone in like the nest quick board was like <laughs> i yo what are we what are we gonna shape it what are we gonna shape the cereal some guy's like i rabbit rabbit Oh, I got idea. Yeah. <laughs> Make that shit like look like they're poo. Nah, that, uh, some guy was like, "Oh, I have a rabbit. He poos circles. Let's do that shit." <laughs> yeah. No, that uh, if you have a rabbit, yeah. Because I had a pet rabbit. Whenever I saw its poo, it kind of like mesmerized me. I'm not gonna yeah. lie. Perfect circles. Huh? Perfect. Yeah. It's literally. It looks like. It looks like toys. Yeah. It looks like toys. It looks like BBs uh -huh. or whatever. And it always mesmerized me. So I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Somebody working for Nesquik that, that like bunnies. Yeah. That put ass. that shit on, bro. Put that <laughs> on. Speaking of animals, though, you watched the Turning Red, right? The pandas. Oh, turning red. We, turning we, we red is fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Too. Did yeah. you did you know the whole thing of uh turning red is about periods? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I, I noticed that right away. Yeah, I didn't. I had to search it up. Oh, really? <laughs> I found that on Reddit. Cause go ahead. I was I was because when I was watching it, right? Yeah. I'm like, okay, there's gonna be theory here somewhere. Yeah. So I'm, I'm I was looking for it. I'm looking for it, and you can tell right away mm -hmm. because it's like a coming of age story yeah, and like how all about maturity. Yeah, all about maturity, mm -hmm. going through uh mood swings, yeah. all of that. Becoming a, a woman, you know, yeah. going through PMS, dude, dude, right? Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Turning red. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Listen, from, from the title. The, the, the title, bro. They, turning red. <laughs> what are they talking about turning red? I'm telling you, they didn't hear it. I literally had to text my friends like, oh, like, like educate me about periods. Like, shout out yeah. to the shorty who told me. So during, when a girl has a period, mm -hmm. they either have light flow, normal flow, or heavy flow. Mm -hmm. So that is like the sizes of the pandas. You know how May is smaller than the rest. She's mm. light flow, so she doesn't have a big period. Oh but May's yeah. May's mom, fucking huge. Oh yeah, she's, she's like the monster. She's, she's like Kurama flow. from yeah, Naruto. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she's heavy flow. Yeah. So all of them were like all the sizes were determined by the period sizes they had. Oh, that makes sense too. Yeah. That makes sense too. Yeah. Cause 
the 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 mom is she, the biggest. Yeah, and she she had a lot of trouble like controlling yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Word, because mm-hmm. I thought I thought it it was based off like their anger or at least their their mood. No, no, like, they have too. a big like mood. Yeah. You know, because if you notice, May always wore red. What does that symbolize? I think it was like I don't I forgot what it symbolized, but I think it's more calm mm. and green. May's mom was always wearing shades of green or blue. Those colors yeah. always represent like fuck. I can't hold in my emotion. I can't hold in my emotion. Oh really? Yeah, red calmness. Blue craziness. Word. Yeah. So those are also things. You know what's crazy? What? You, you have a theory? No, 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 no. So I was watching it, right? Okay. And there's this one scene in Turning Red. Uh-huh. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if Disney watches Jump for Jump like that, but oh, there's, you? This, there's this one scene. There's this one scene. These two guys sitting on the bench. No. One guy kind of had hair like me. <laughs> And the other guy was sitting across from him like this. No! <laughs> in a baseball cap. No, dead ass! <laughs> Are you dead ass? Dead ass. Are you dead ass? It was it was on you know that that scene with the with the convenience store and um they're like on Spadina. What would be Spadina for us? Yeah. Because it's based in Toronto. Yeah, yeah I know. That's that's fire. That's why it's crazy. That's why yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. For the people that didn't know, that movie is based in Toronto. No. Nah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, but I'm I know they were both like Asian looking. I mean, they're I Asian looking. That. Was it like a, a scene or was it like a cut scene? No, it was in the very back, bro. Oh, no, because I'm 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 evaluating this yeah. shit like every frame. You know what I mean? Yeah, because I didn't notice it. Yeah, yeah. So the bus passes, uh, picks May May up. Yeah. And after the bus passes, like in the back, like it's blurry still. It's actually blurry. Okay. Like you can't see like a clear face, but it's two people like sitting on the bench in the no, back. Yeah. Made but <laughs> it, uh, if it is, yeah, it's fucking crazy. Yo, that would be crazy. If, if the animator like watches Jumper Jump, shout out you, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it wouldn't, it wouldn't be too far fetched, bro. Mm-hmm. It wouldn't be too far fetched because yeah. Disney, when they are doing like little cameos or mm. even putting like um extras, yeah. Yo, they're they rather just do it for some thing they're thinking about i mean they don't want to just put like random facts, stuff facts. even put in put yourself in their shoes mm. let's say you're writing a storybook and you're making up characters mm-hmm. you're gonna you're gonna make up characters on people you've heard of before or people you're inspired by yeah right yeah you're, you're not just gonna come up with a random person ass, yeah and you always want to evaluate the situation mm-hmm. so say toronto what's really big in toronto this podcast you can say it's a you can throw it in as an mm. easter egg you know true what else the, the cn tower all you obviously you have to have that in yeah yeah but it's yeah. always like boom they could have even threw a cutscene of k showtime playing in the back of basketball oh that'd be crazy that too crazy. yeah that'd be crazy you feel me like the culture of canada we have a lot yeah i remember um they did a they did a disney short called bow have you ever watched that? Wow, no. That was also based in Toronto. And I think oh, I shit. think that was the first like tester yeah. for some for a project they wanted to base in Toronto. Okay. They did that first and it went crazy. Yeah. Because everybody's like, yo, the CN Tower, CN Tower. Right. And it's like a Chinese family making like bows, making like um okay. like I dim sum, it, okay, all that. This, yeah. Yeah. Anyways, one of the coolest parts was mm-hmm. there's a kid, he was wearing a jersey. It was like a subtle Easter egg. He's wearing a jersey with a number 15, purple and red jersey. Purple and red, number 15. Oh, Vince Carter. Vince Carter. Oh. Vince Carter, bro. <laughs> you know what they should have had? Um, The guy on Young Street, on Dundas, saying, believe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine he went up to May and he's like, believe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> The only thing though, it was based in it was based in two thousand like what two thousand two yeah two thousand two. So we didn't see like no Drake theories and yeah, stuff yeah, like yeah. that. It's based more like That's, early two thousand. Imagine they threw Drake in there too. I was waiting for it. They did a Blue yeah. Jay one though. Oh yeah, the very end. I don't know if you saw that. No. There was a Blue Jay that landed see, on the thing. That's how you know. Like I'm watching just straight up for the movie. You're watching for a different reason. No, I watch. I watch. Yeah, I watch all movies like that though. Really? I I enjoy it still. Yeah. I enjoy it, but I think me like looking at all the hints is more fun to me. Okay. Okay, true. That's why I love Euphoria <laughs> yeah. because they'll put in like hidden themes that get un- unraveled later. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that's just true. Mm. Do, do you do you think um Fez died? Oh, Fez? No, no. You mean Ash? Oh no, I mean Ash. Ash died. Ashtray? Because remember what you said. What you said. If you don't if, see, if you don't see it, they're probably still alive. That's hard to say, bro. That's yeah. hard to say. But did you know? Did you I know? Just finished Euphoria, so did you know that whole scene with Ashtray of him dying in that bathtub? Spoiler: uh-huh. It was actually predicted throughout the show. What do you so mean? in the first episode, they actually flashed an image of Ashtray standing like above the like right. You know, right before he gets shot, yeah, yeah, he's he, like looking. He, there's a red dot on him. Yeah, he's like looking. Yeah, that scene was actually in the very beginning of the episode in season. I mean, uh, 
Season, season two, one. episode one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The episode one, right? Okay, okay. Also, throughout the whole season, season two, mm -hmm. I don't know if you noticed, bro, but this yeah. is crazy. There was a Scarface poster. There was no. a Scarface poster a lot in, in the scenes with Fez and with Ashtray. Yeah. Specifically Ashtray. Okay. How did Scarface, Tony Montana, die? Yeah. He died just like how... Oh, Ash Ash died. Died. dead ass? Yes. Oh, that's a with a gun, guns blazing, bro. Remember? Oh yeah, okay. Never guns mind. blazing. <laughs> this guy got all the strap. Bah, 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 bah. Yeah. <laughs> Say hello to my. You remember? Holy fuck. That's actually really smart in the writing. Yeah. Of the story. So so throughout the background, if you pay attention, so mm -hmm. that was me, right? Because mm -hmm. I know, like, oh, they don't just put things here just cause. Just cause, yeah. Yeah, they're gonna put it here because a reason later. Mm -hmm. And I was looking at the poster, like, interesting, interesting. Scarface, yeah, because they're yeah, drug yeah. dealers, uh -huh. right? And then. It didn't come to me until the end because somebody told me about it. I'm like, yo, yeah. that makes so much sense. <laughs> oh, shit. Makes so much sense because yeah. you're going to go out like that. Oh, that's fire. <laughs> you wanted fire. to go out like Scarface. You want to go out like Tony Montana. Yeah, that ass. You know one of the, the cool facts I learned about it too? You know that scene where the guy who... who Came in the house because he he fucked the the girl and wanted the tape. From oh, um, Cal, the, Cal, the, Cal, the yeah, dad, Cal. yeah, the dad. Cal, they went Fez and uh, and things house. Yeah, and they had that guy when oh, uh, what's the I keep forgetting the little kid's name. Ash, oh, Ash, 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 Ash. He hit him with a gun like hella times. Yeah, yeah, he did. You know the guy actually on scene he got concussed because they had to run that scene back so many times. Oh, really? Yeah. So you actually hit him? Because the the um Ash said the bottom of the the gun. Yeah, obviously it wasn't real. It was rubber though, mm. but they had to had to run it like 15, 20 times yeah and the guy at the end of it had bruises and was concussed damn he got hit hella times <laughs> yeah. too he got hit hella he times did. That's he did. but yeah fam. would you would you be like a a stunt a stunt actor i don't think it's worth it you don't think it's worth it, it well you get paid a lot though how much how much uh, like what's a like main salary of a stunt actor i'm pretty sure they get paid nice like they okay. get paid not even that that far off from a, a actor yeah actor. i'm telling you it has to be the right price for me too because if it's like i'm doing like Jackie Chan, I get hit in the face, shit mm. like that. There's no way I'm, I'm risking my health for a bit of money. I don't know. I think it's kind of cool, though. And I don't even get to be the star. Like, you don't see me. I'm just somebody who gets hit. <laughs> True. <laughs> okay, well, but, but here's the thing, right? Okay. Let's say let's say there's a very, there's a very popular actor that yeah. not a lot of people look like. And you're like that guy. <laughs> any any project he yeah. gets hired for, yeah. you'll be there. So, for example, Tom Holland's True. Act, Tom Holland's um, what do you call it? Stunt stunt double looks exactly like him. Looks exactly like him, but he's gonna be in every single movie yeah. that Tom Holland's in, right? And like uh, they all say, if Mac Miller ever had a documentary, who's the who's gonna play him? Fez, Fez, Fez yeah, yeah. Ultimate. You know, Mac he Miller. hates that. He hates really. Angus McCloud hates getting yeah. getting that um that comment like, oh, are you gonna play Mac? Are you yeah. gonna play Mac? Because it gets annoying. <laughs> yeah, <true. I> mean, <laughs> it gets annoying. In all the interviews, like everyone says, like, oh shit, he was literally just playing himself in the movie because how he talks in real life is exactly yeah. how he talks in the movie. Yeah, it is. It is. If, did you watch the sneaker shopping? <laughs> yes, bro. Oh my I God. didn't know. I didn't notice how. Because remember, you told me, yeah, he's permafrost. I didn't. Yeah. Know, I was like. No, nah, he, he's not like that. He's only like that in the movie. No, he, he's, he's like it. that. He's like I that. I seen it. He's like when uh, he's like, uh, is the shoe? Is there AC in the shoe box? Like, bro, <laughs> that's dead ass. Just like, yes. <laughs> he's fez in real life, yeah. bro. I told you the story, right? He was homeless before yeah. before he got on Euphoria. Yeah, that's crazy though. I know. Y'all, you have to believe in like, there's anything could be possible. Yep. That guy was on the street. Yeah made it to euphoria and now he's a, a household name in in yeah. the in the movie world that's how you know if that's you, crazy if you have that look yeah you can make it anywhere and there's a video oh my fault yeah. there's a video of i don't know if you've seen that it's a viral video going around where the girls were dancing in the restaurant and fez comes up and busts their table oh yeah i saw that yeah. i saw that and, that, that's, and he's that's like tall. he's that's like tall. annoyed and shit but yeah you feel me? he made it yeah it, it's it's really weird to see like super um popular people to be in situations you're not used <laughs> yeah. to just like like the Kanye documentary, bro. Oh, <laughs> bro. Oh my God, man. That's the first time I seen yeah. Kanye in that vulnerable position yeah, like that. Yeah, dead ass. And I, you know what? This off topic, but I, I liked how it was narrated. You know how it was like, and Kanye. <laughs> Yo, he sounded <laughs> like, he met sound Jay-Z. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they went to the studio. I, I look at it <laughs> not at first, but then as soon, I, like the more you watch, you get noticed that Kanye. I think, I think my favorite line was like, was like, I used to know Kanye, <laughs> but I never met Yeezy. <laughs> Bro, Cootie's voice is so good. Cootie's voice is so good. I love the Kanye. <laughs> that shit's golden. I know Kanye, but 
I never got to meet Yeezy. <laughs> <laughs> no but yo that line though that's yeah, kind of that, it's fire that's hard that's like so it's so deep yeah. too bro literally two different personalities yeah because imagine let's say you know me right now mm -hmm. and then let's say i become a crazy different person <laughs> yeah. oh my god that'd be so weird that'd be so yeah. weird to like how would you react if somebody you really really loved or at least like you know really closely uh -huh. became somebody like that and someone totally different and they treated you like they <laughs> they don't even know you anymore i would be pissed I would be how'd pissed. you feel bro like okay that's like going hollywood if you ever acted hollywood obviously first thing what the fuck i would pay you like yo mm. i'm still your brother we did this shit together mm. and you're just gonna leave me and carlo <laughs> left gavin and gavin was homeless <laughs> <laughs> shit like that you know you can't do that yeah 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 you can't do that bro i think i think if if you're ever in that position yeah bam i there's nothing you can really do though that's what mm. sucks that's what really sucks for especially like Cootie's position. Mm -hmm. What's so sick about Cootie? I really put so much respect on him. He he kind of manifested everything for Kanye. Yeah, because we, yeah. of that. Because of that documentary. That ass. Like I said, he didn't have to record all of Kanye's process. Mm -hmm. That was just like out the blue. I think he's gonna blow up. Okay, let's go. Yeah, I'm gonna turn on the camera. Yeah. Yo, honestly, I want like a cootie in my life, man. <laughs> like, I want someone to like work. Just like, yo, after the doc, right? <laughs> after the doc, when I first got the Ox Horse package, mm -hmm. I. I recorded it because yeah, I knew smart. I knew like one day I'm gonna need this footage yeah. or at least I really want to be able to to look back on mm. it. So I'm like, Michaela, get the camera. Yeah, let's record it. Yeah, and let's just do like a little. You don't. We don't have to say anything. Mm -hmm. Just just record me opening it, like yeah. talking about it, or whatever. Yeah. My a business opportunity for me is shit. I open the camera. I record you. Mm. How much did Cootie and things sell their Bro, for? Oh in the future, God. if I ever if, if anything goes bad, I'll sell the Carlos feature. Yo, <laughs> thirty million. Oh thirty million God. is crazy. That's it's crazy. He could have sold it for way more too. Like Kanye is like the biggest artist like not right now. Bro, I'm telling you, like <laughs> knock on wood, like yeah. I don't want Kanye to die, but if Kanye passed away, yeah. that footage would probably be worth like mm -hmm. Thir 300 million yeah imagine someone had mj's footage yeah, oh, yeah. Wait, is like there, that is there, like is that though not like that though okay yeah because because he recorded him as if like yo oh, nobody else believes in him <laughs> yeah yeah nobody else believes in him yeah take in he was walking into the meetings putting everybody on his songs. putting on his song everybody's like oh yeah sounds good and it's like oh, i gotta i gotta take this call i gotta take this call whatever yeah. and Kanye walks out like ah oh, fuck yeah. they don't believe in me i know but his um his driving force is mm -hmm. like belief in himself to be that confident mm -hmm. that made him who he is bro yeah so is that what you look if like how do you see potential in other people do you see the drive do you see the passion shining through them like what what do you do to like see to see somebody if some, if something was, special yeah if someone was like carlos i want to work with you mm. but you're just like straight off looks and like the passion on how they're talking to you how would you tell by what they show me mm. so so let's say let's say let's put it into like um an easy example. Okay. Are you talking like music or like clothing? Let's see. No, like just straight up working for you. Anybody, anybody. Yeah. It yeah. depends on what it is. Mm -hmm. So if it's something like music, like I have to listen to your music, right? Yeah. But most importantly, I'm going to look at your character. Yeah. Because I, I was going to say, what if the music isn't good, but like he still still has kind of the drive and mm. you can see like I can improve him. Yeah. Yeah. It's, the char it's all about the character, right? Mm -hmm. It's all about, okay, is he doing it just for fun? Is he doing it because what's driving him is money. Yeah. I mean, you got to look at like, if I'm going to give a position to somebody, it's got to be the right person for it or else they're not going to take it to where it's going to be, where it should be. Yeah. Get me? Like if, if a person has the skills and the drive to take it way, 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 way farther than yeah. the other guy, you'll be able to see that just by their character. You get me? Mm -hmm. Like just by their, their reaction in certain situations, just by like, the way they move, the way they carry themselves, you'll be able to tell right away, okay, when it comes down to this, on this day, when he's not feeling great, he's still gonna be great, Yeah, right? Yeah, that's it. And like the main saying is like, hard work beats talent when talent runs out. Hard work beats talent when talent. When talent start, stops working. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 You know? For sure, you know for mean? sure, 100%. Yeah, I, I noticed that, that character shit too, when I was trying out for a basketball team. Mm -hmm. I made the team, but a really good guy got cut from the team and, I, and we were like, yo, what the fuck coach? Like, we need him on the season. Mm. So what happened was I was coachable. The other guy that was really good, but you couldn't coach him. Mm, like you his, character, learn. his character was like, I'm the best. Like no way, like I'm not passing the ball, no, no nothing. Mm. But obviously he can drop 40 points whenever he wanted. The coach doesn't want that. Yeah. What, what did we did? We won the chip just cause our, our team chemistry. Mm. And you can tell that like Golden State, like they're all of it, Spurs, 
how how they pass the ball together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You feel me? See, I'm gonna take the devil's advocate though. Okay. I'm gonna take the other side and say, yeah, it's not necessarily that's not necessarily a wrong thing though. Yeah. If if you're that person, if you're that mm-hmm. person, and you believe in yourself like that, and that's how you work, that's how you are. Yeah. Then that team just isn't for you. Yummy. You know I mean? Go find something else. But obviously, you can in elementary school, whatever it may be. Mm-hmm. But yeah. but I'm talking like on a different level of like let's say working for a company, working yeah. for working on a team of people, mm-hmm. for example. If you're that type of person that can't work with those people like that, doesn't mean you're you're bad. It just means it doesn't mesh. Like yeah. the chemistry isn't like you, that. You need to know your role. There can't be two superstars. Uh, what do you call it? Jared Dudley, Dudley, the NBA player. Yeah. He's super old, but he knows his role on the team. Mm. Like even in this podcast, I know my role. That's why it works. Mm. If I tried to act like you, it wouldn't work. I know my role. Yeah, I'm the hype. Yeah, peppy, yeah, yeah, peppy, yeah. Let's keep it going, type thing. You know. And that's how. That's how. That's how the chemistry. Yeah, builds. It, it flourishes. It yeah. flourishes because if you have like opposing things, for example, look at Russell Westbrook. Yeah. Every team Russell Westbrook is on. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's the perfect example, bro. Russell, like, because he wants he's, to shine. He's an amazing character. I mean, yeah. he's an amazing player. Mm-hmm. Amazing player. When he was on, on OKC, holy yeah. shit, he was great. But it's just that when he moves to to a team yeah. that has different chemistry that wants to work a different way. And it's just not for him. That's kind of like the mom mentality too, though. Ass, yeah. So it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just you want to be that person that works like yeah. that. But if you have the greatest player on your team, then you have to step down. Like you can't hog the ball. Yeah. And like that sucks for for people going from high school to college to the ba- to NBA because mm. you're no longer the best. Right? Yeah, that's so, so true. So that's high so school, true. Your, your ego is built. You have hella shorties. Yeah, you know? <laughs> that's you very mo- true. You move to college, you're at the end of the bench. And that's what happened to me too. I was the, the shit in elementary high school. Mm. High school, I, can't, I didn't grow. Mm. I'm not the shit no more. I was end of the bench. I still can't believe that shit. Mm. You know? Yeah. It's yeah. it's all it's all like a journey too. It's a humbling like, experience. You'll, you'll, yeah, you'll find you'll find your way through it. Mm-hmm. But like you gotta know yourself. Yeah. Now, all, honestly, always, always mm-hmm. shout out to Drake, know yourself stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Cause like once if you ever go on bigger podcasts, you obviously have to know your role. Yeah, yeah. You can't you yeah. can't try to out talk them. You That's can't, not you gonna can't work. Joe Rogan, Joe Rogan. Exactly. <laughs> Yo, that, that yo, you can't. imagine, <laughs> imagine you try to Jorgen Jorgen. Kick Hell you out. He nah. will never release the episode. Hell nah. Oh my goodness. I feel like I feel like I'll I'll know just because I watch so many of <laughs> yeah. it, so much of it. So you'll know your role. Like, yeah, you know? I know. I I honestly like I sound kind of kind of weird for this, but. Mm. I've, I've had like daydreams of what I'd say and shit. <laughs> <laughs> like on Drogan show. I swear to God. Hey, I, I don't blame you. I yeah. had daydreams of what I said on the show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I'd have daydreams like, hmm, maybe I should bring it this way. I don't, yeah. I don't know how he would react to this talk. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. So yo, Joe, if you ever want me on, hit me up. I'll that be on the podcast. Yeah. You know what? It's crazy too. YouTube is paying millions of dollars for people to start uploading their, their uh, podcast on YouTube. Just really? Strictly yeah? on YouTube now. Cause they want. I think this is the new age of YouTube. It's just all gonna be a podcast show. Podcast, mm. yeah. So my my dad, right? Mm-hmm. He told his boss, one of like the GMs, yeah, and where he works. He's like, um, check out check out my son's podcast. Like, yeah, I yeah. think they were having a conversation, right? Okay. And he took a look at it, and he was really impressed. The the GM was really impressed. Like, mm-hmm. wow. And he he told my dad, you know why this is so successful? And my dad yeah. was thinking, he's like, why? Tell tell me why. Yeah. He's like. Because he's doing disruptive engineering. What's that? Disruptive. disruptive no, sorry. Disruptive innovation. Think about it. disruptive innovation. So what is that, right? Okay. And my, dad, he, my dad, he's an engineer. He knows what that okay, is, okay, right? Yeah. So disruptive innovation is pretty much destroying what's obsolete. Yeah. Destroying what's obsolete. Okay. And then building something that takes over, right? Mm-hmm. So what does our podcast do that makes something else obsolete? Take a guess. What? You know what the GM said? What? Television. Oh television bro when we used to watch ellen when oh, we used to watch jerry springer when yeah. we used to watch dr phil oprah yeah it's like talk shows it's talk shows bro yeah it's talk shows in a sense ellen was the greatest podcaster ever dead ass but it was just wasn't like a podcast <laughs> setting yeah, i know yeah and i swear ellen shows were like 20 minutes 30 minutes long they weren't hours no? yeah yeah well if it was probably longer they cut it up okay, but still yeah. you know what i mean like yeah that's fact they'll have they'll have stuff like that but what makes it crazy mm-hmm. is when is when you realize something like this can be that with a higher budget in front of the audience yeah live podcast it could yeah. be that with a higher budget yeah that's why um what's crazy uh you know dixie d'amelio shout yeah. out dixie 
Dixie D'Amelio one time. Her podcast, her her show, the Dixie D'Amelio show. I think it's called the Late Late Night Show, something like that. Oh yeah, the, that's my favorite. The Dixie the, with J- James Corden. No, 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 no. She she put a twist on it. I forgot what it's called, but it's Dixie D'Amelio. Okay. And it's pretty much a talk show. Oh. She has like a studio setting, but it was started off like a podcast like this, yep. just like this. That's so smart. Now that's going to be replaced. Jimmy Jimmy Kimmel, all of those guys. Yeah, they're, yo, they're cheesed. Yeah. They're pissed because nobody's watching TV anymore. Even SNL, if you really take it in. What's what, SNL? Oh, okay. Yeah. SNL Saturday Night Live, yeah, yeah. right? So that's goaded. That's a classic. But mm. what is disrupting that? What's disrupting that? SNL. Social media, bro. Memes. Oh. <laughs> memes. Memes killed SNL, did it not? Yeah. That shit destroyed SNL. Yeah, and that's all that was funny as fuck. It's fam. funny as fuck. But we don't, we don't want to do that. It's quick seven second yeah meeting, exactly and then so that's why honestly everything i've seen off snl for yeah. the past like 10 years mm-hmm. five years or whatever yeah. was either youtube videos or mm-hmm. quick clips i seen on instagram or whatever yeah right yeah you, I, I didn't like evaluate it like that so so this is this is where it gets crazy right okay because the elites right the people in in high in high positions that own <laughs> these shows yeah they're now competing with us the people no, no don't say that don't say that <laughs> Fuck. Think about it. That's Think right. about it. Yeah. What? <laughs> do you know, do you think that's why they're, they're doing all this shit now to distract? Like fuck, man. Like tear tear it all down. They're like the SpongeBob and Patrick. The files. The files. The people are winning. It, it could be. Who knows? Yeah. It could be. Alive. Like we'll not go. We'll, we won't go to the rabbit hole like that, bro. We won't go to the rabbit hole like that. We'll, I know. We'll keep it at we'll that. But it at that. but it's very interesting to think about. Mm-hmm. Very interesting to think about. That's funny. Yo, what you got on today, bro? Right, you already know. Cuts clothing. Cuts brother. clothing. On, it's okay. Easy. <laughs> it's looking. That's your favorite piece. Of course, this one I can wear to a dinner. Mm-hmm. I can I can run in this. It's so you can dress it up, dress yeah, it down, bro. Easy. I think the worst thing is mm-hmm. when you have a such a huge closet and all of these clothes but you don't yeah. know what's like your essentials yeah. you know what i mean but yeah. cuts clothing shout That's, out to our sponsor shout out. comes with the best <laughs> essential pieces mm-hmm. Perfect fit. Yep. And honestly, it goes with any fit I want to pull off. That ass. So every Cuts clothing is designed with a modern tailored fit. So, and they're insanely comfortable. So they got tees, they got hoodies, they got everything. All your essentials in one. Cuts clothing has revolutionized the traditional outdated t-shirt category. They make it super easy to mix and match styles and colors. So you guys can find the perfect style for you. Long sleeve Henley, no problem. Short sleeve crew neck, they got it. So they took it all in. So their fabric won't shrink pill or fade in the wash plus if you if you guys have this shirt it's insanely soft like you would already know so join hundreds of thousands of guys that made the simple choice to elevate their wardrobe with cuts so get 15 percent off your first order by going to cutsclothing.com slash jumpers that's j-u-m-p-e-r-s so that's c-u-t-s clothing.com slash jumpers for 15 percent off the only t-shirt worth wearing the link will be down below in the description make sure to click it <clears throat> okay i want to bring up a. Uh... A ghost story, actually. Oh, bet I have a ghost game that that I searched up because remember you you told me about the elevator game. And oh how yeah, that yeah, lady, yeah. So do you know about the four corner game? The four corner game. Wait, wait. Is it has have to do with a mirror? Or no, no, it doesn't. Okay, okay. Tell me, so tell me, tell the me. The four corner game is to test if demons or ghosts are in your house. No, we're not so, playing that here. No, we're not playing that here. Sure. And don't, I advise you do not play this game. Like if you don't like are scared of ghosts. And shit. Yo, don't play no <laughs> spiritual games. <laughs> Period. <laughs> Period. Yo, I don't want to hear any stories of. After watching Jumper's Show. No, no, yo, but listen, <laughs> yeah. you know, um, in our last episode, when you were talking about the elevator game. You played it? No, 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 obviously. Yeah, no, yeah, what yeah. the fuck? But Jer, when you were playing the elevator game, I saw so many comments. 4506 or something. That timestamp, the cameras went blurry. Everyone no, wait, wait, saying, wait, hold on. Was it elevator? I didn't talk about it the last episode. It was, it was, it's not uploaded. It's not oh, uploaded. Oh yeah, it's not uploaded yet. Yeah. But, but the, I think one of the, when you're talking about ghosts. Oh, the, um, the Bahamas the ghost Bahamas story. The Bahamas ghost. Yeah. There, there was a, a little like blur in the camera and everyone's saying that that was a spirit walking by like in the room. That's why fo- unfocused on, on us. Whoa. Yeah. Wait, 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 for real? No, that ass. You can, there's a time, there's so many timestamps for it. You guys go back to the one where I'm wearing, wearing a red hoodie and go around like. The Bahamas fo- ghost story yeah, one. Yeah, I yeah. think so. I think I noticed it, but I never like took it in. It's during the one we're talking about that. Oh, that ass. It happened perfect timing. I looked back and I was like, oh shit. That's really interesting, yeah. bro. That's not a fuck. But yeah, so shout out. So here, if 
if there's a like a blur when I tell the story, then yeah. that's how you know. Okay, so the four corner game. This is how you tell if there's demons and ghosts, right? Demons or ghosts in your room? In your room. Okay. So you can test it. So what you need is four people mm -hmm. and a room with four corners. Yeah. Right? When you walk in the room, you turn on the, off the lights. Yeah. All right. And whenever you go in the room, you say your name out loud. So the ghost or demon knows who it is, mm -hmm. right? For out of the four people, you choose one person to be the leader. Mm -hmm. The rest go in the, the corners and you face the wall. Right? Yeah. So the leader, he counts down three, two, one. When he counts, to the, when he says one, all you guys move clockwise to the next corner. Mm -hmm. If there's a demon or ghost, one person will appear. Whoa. So you like know how where, where? In the, in the corner that's missing. Because there's always a corner that's going to be open because the leader is in the oh, middle. Oh, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. And if you see that person, if you see that person, do not talk to that person. Yeah. You feel me? And one person will go missing. Oh, shit. So if one person go missing, you have to do the emergency protocol. Yeah, yeah. Count three, two, one. Go counterclockwise and knock on knock on the the door. Yo, so it's like dimensions. Yeah, it's dead ass dimensions. <laughs> so dead ass, you'll see a figure yeah, in your yeah. room that that's not the person who walked in with you, right? And to end the game, to end the game, you run to the light switch, say your yeah. name three times, flick it on. What have yo? What happens if if you don't? If you don't. If you no, if you don't fam, don't go in that room no more. Like Lily, run out. Like what if what if that person you couldn't save them, bro? See, I don't know. There was no part two. <laughs> oh, shit. There was no part two when I saw the video. All I saw was the emergency protocol. You have to go counterclockwise this time. Yeah. So he comes back. Yeah. yeah knock yeah. on a knock on the door. Yo, I gotta I gotta like look into it on Reddit. Yeah. Because I know there's people on Reddit that play all these games. Remember like the the three kings story yeah, I told yeah, you? Yeah. Like these people really play them, and yeah. I want to see. I'm gonna search yeah. that one up. I, What's it know, called again? Uh, four corner game. Four corner game. Okay, bet. You know Sam and Kobe, they do crazy ghost stories too. No, they do like uh ghost adventure. Yeah, go to Holy. We could be the, the Asian version. <laughs> yeah. I want one day, yo, if we could collab with them, those are the people I want to collab yeah. with because I want to go and travel to these places. Like <laughs> they're your type of people. Like, fuck it, let's go. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, honestly, I really yeah. wanna I wanna really wanna check those out. Yeah, because they're white. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we roll, we roll with different ethnicities that don't believe in that shit. <laughs> yo. They're brave though, bro. Yeah, they're facts. brave. Facts. So there's this story I heard too. Mm -hmm. This is a story. It's about um this Filipino guy. No, Filipino. Yeah, this Filipino guy in California. Uh, yeah. So I think it's in Fullerton, California. Okay. So he he moved into this new house, yeah. right? Just by himself. Like yeah. his first I think he moved from Seattle to, to California mm -hmm. and he got this place. And he used to have like these common occurrences where he would he would see somebody in one of his rooms and he would walk into the room like who the hell? Walks into the room, turns on the light. And nobody's there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he would have those couple times during out the week, yeah, right? Like right? And he didn't really care about it. He just like swept to the side. Oh, this is, I'm probably just tired. Mm -hmm. I'm probably just tired. I'm probably just not thinking straight. So one night, yeah, he was washing the dishes, <laughs> and he had he had um a bowl he was cooking soup with, right? Mm -hmm. A really shiny silver bowl. So he was washing it, washing it in the sink, and in the reflection, he saw his Lola. No, and. He got so shook to his stomach. Yeah. Because he realized, yo, Lola passed away <gasps> like five years, five yeah. years ago. And he was looking at the reflection and it was his Lola pointing, pointing. What? And looking very concerned on her face, right? So he got so scared. He threw the pot, turned around, nothing's there. Okay. So on that day, he's like, okay, fuck that. I'm getting out of this house. I'm going to go and spend the night with my friend, right? <laughs> yeah, I would do the same. Stay at his friend's house. Yeah. So he stayed there a couple nights and then forgot about the occurrence with his, with his Lola. His yeah. grandma, by the way, mm -hmm. for yeah. all the white folk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah. So, so what happened was he comes back. Okay. He comes back to his Fullerton house, right? Mm -hmm. And he sleeps. He has this nightmare. And this nightmare is of him on this like trail to a house. And there's this girl in front of him, right? There's this girl, this woman, uh -huh. long black hair and really, really black eyes, right? Okay. Coming closer and closer to him, right? And he's like screaming, screaming, screaming. Yeah. And this woman grabs his wrist, right? Fuck? And it feels like knives, very cold knives oh, grabbing his hell, wrist, man. right? Yeah. And he, he can look right when, right when she grabbed him, he started to feel and see all of the terrible things that she's done in her life. Yeah. So he got so scared. He, he like tried to push her off, right? Yeah, what happened? So he woke up. He woke up and his, 
His wrists are still stinging. They're oh. still stinging. They're red. From a, This is from a dream, though. He woke up from the dream, though. No. He woke up from the dream. Now he's awake. He sees his wrists. They're red. Oh, they're red. Then he looks up. Yeah. All of a sudden, he sees the same woman nah. come up and grab him. Nah. Grab him while he's awake, right? Yeah. Grabs his wrist again. Pulling, pulling, pulling. Then he kicks her off. Mm -hmm. So he kicks her off. And she bumps into a bunch of furniture across his bed, right? Yeah. The furniture moves. The furniture moves. And he sees her. She, like, stands up. No. He looks at him with her black eyes. Yeah, yeah. Dark black eyes. Smiles. And then disappears from her stomach outward. Like what? Vanishes, vanishes. So, so the guy, right? This guy, this guy is fucking scared. Yeah. So he, he like leans back and he starts thinking, looking at the spot where he kicked her off. Okay. Looking at the furniture that is still displaced from where he kicked her and pushed her into the thing. Yeah. And he's looking at it thinking, am I going to wake up? Am I going to wake up? Oh, fuck. It turns out 6 a.m. in the morning still. Still, he's awake for like five hours and he still sees the furniture move. What? So he starts thinking back. He's like, maybe my Lola was trying to protect me. From something. From something, right? Oh, yeah. So what he does, mm -hmm. the precautions he takes to like bless the house. He's like, okay, I can't deal with this, right? <laughs> yeah. So he goes to a church and he gets all of these blessed crosses. Okay. I think like there's these uh, traditional Mexican crosses, mm -hmm. like super blessed. Hung those up. Hung those up all around his house. Yeah. And he's never had an occurrence like that ever since. But what? Oh, fuck. I wish there was more lore about it. Like, who was that woman? I don't know, bro. Who's that? So black know. eyes, black eyes, uh, black, black. Like black figure. She was like a shadow. Like yeah. a shadow, bro. Was this in Philippines, Japan? Where was no, this? No, this was in California. I just said California. Oh, oh, California. oh shit. So this is a real ass story. Yes, this is a real story. Some Filipino guy with a Lola, bro. So, so if we... Like he's still alive, right? I don't know if he's he's out there like that. Oh, though. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. He's not no celebrity like, or nothing. Let, let's interview the guy, bro. I don't know if he's no celebrity, but like, yeah, yeah this is this is a real story. Holy fuck, man! This is a real yeah. event that happened. I know. You see, like the the stuff that he did, I would do exactly like go to church, mm -hmm. put fucking put salt and pepper everywhere, like try to. Wait, so why salt and pepper? I don't know. This guy's making eggs. <laughs> Wait, salt and pepper. You know how you put you put the the phone in rice. <laughs> <laughs> put, put some rice around man. <laughs> clean the house <laughs> that's fucked I think I think there's one thing you can do to to take away evil spirits is like put what? put change near your windows something like that oh that's what it's for I thought it was just lucky cause I have change all around my window oh you do yeah oh that's for spirits but I think that's for Filipino that's like a Filipino thing yeah and I think a other way to do it too is um yeah. Just copper, copper wire. Oh, I've seen that in one person's house. Mm. And I didn't know why. So copper wire, it, it pretty much enhances energy. Yeah. So a lot of people like that do crystals and mm -hmm. stuff. So they'd have copper wire mm -hmm. to enhance that that vibration. Yeah. So it kind of brings out that energy out of it. Okay. So if you're very like um spiritual person yeah. and you wanna if if you want the energy to to reflect to the whole room, yeah, put some copper in your room. Mm, put some okay. copper in your room. Yeah. And in Kanye's documentary and genius so i was i was looking because you know i watched closely <laughs> yeah. i watched closely mm -hmm. i saw in one of the offices mm -hmm. at the rock the rockefeller <laughs> <laughs> why would you do that <laughs> the rock in the building you know yeah. so the rockefeller office mm -hmm. they had this huge like copper statue thing i'm yeah. like whoa interesting <laughs> interesting yeah it's, it's definitely for that it's definitely for that y you know what i found out too when you threw up the thing because no, the rock <laughs> yeah. yeah so so when i we, we got on the rolling stones article i posted about it right yeah yeah and the next slide i don't know if you you saw it but i put you you're remember i took a screenshot of you in the podcast doing this oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> and i have a picture of me doing this too yeah so i put yours and mine and the rolling stone link and everyone that oh. replied to me i took it down i took it down to be mysterious yeah like, yeah, yeah. So only, only a few saw it but everyone was like oh yeah you guys are the theory now <laughs> Yo, I, I might put it up on the screen just for just for the fucks of it. No, I, honestly, if if there was like a clone of us, yeah, that like if I was watching us from an outside perspective mm -hmm. and I saw that, I'd probably be like, "Yo, wait yeah. a minute, yeah." Because how how are two guys in a basement in Toronto getting on Rolling, on Rolling Stone? Stone? <laughs> Unless we did something with this to get Yo, on it, you feel me? Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. 
bro. So it is believable. It is believable. It is believable. And I think we should we should honestly just keep believing him though. <laughs> okay, I'll cut this part. No, I'm just kidding. You see the ice flicker though? Facts. Mm, stop, stop, stop. Shape shifting, shape shifting. Oh, oh, going back to like the copper thing. Yeah. One thing you could do, I should tell you this. Mm -hmm. One thing you could do if you're having a lot of nightmares. Okay. Anybody that has a lot of nightmares, anybody that has a lot of like very demonic presences in the room. Yeah. One thing you can actually do to dismantle all of that and destroy all of that is you take, you know, a railroad, a railroad, right? Yeah, yeah. So you go to a railroad. They have these like super long iron rods that are stuck into the the, the rail. Yeah, you take them. So if you take one, uh -huh. it's actually a superstition and almost a tradition oh, to shit. leave one under your bed. Yeah, and you'll never have a nightmare ever again. What the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's that's fucked. I'm not gonna go to a railroad track and take one and put it in my room. <laughs> no, but there's some there's something there, bro. Yeah. There's some like real spiritual presence mm -hmm. with that. Like there's yeah. something about it. Uh -huh. One thing, right? Mm -hmm. If you if you think about it, there's a lot of um stories about railroads too. I was gonna tell a nightmare story too, but but go ahead. No, I'll let you tell it, but okay. I just wanna say quick, yeah. Um that story about the devil at the railroads. Oh yeah. In, right? in in Disney, uh the main one was someone died close to it, and I think I told this before, mm -hmm. but every I think midnight they see the person walking on the railroad. Mm. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. So it's that that's what it is. But if if you guys already are having nightmares about clowns, I'm about to give you a story that that will. So don't watch this shit at night. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's but hear. Yeah, let's so hear. Listen, so there was a babysitter one day, mm -hmm. and she was just taking care of the kids, taking care of the kids. They put she put both of the kids in the rooms already. Yeah. Right. And right before she was going to just chill out, right before the parents were coming home. She, she sat down and started watching TV. Mm -hmm. Picked right away. She, she noticed that in the TV room, there was a clown statue. A clown statue. A random clown, clown statue. statue. Yeah. And she noticed that every angle that she kind of went, you know, in like Mickey, like uh, Chuck E. Cheese, like you kind of see the eyes following you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so it that's looks what like happened. That's what happened. She was like, why is It's there? like looking at your soul. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and as she was looking at it, she gets a call from the dad. She's like, oh, mm -hmm. how are the kids? How are the kids? Oh, I just put them away, right? Right? Yeah. Before the conversation ends, she randomly asks, why is there a clown? Why do you guys have a random clown statue? You know what the dad says? What? There's silence. Yo, Abby, we don't have a clown statue. <laughs> Fam, she runs Yo. up, takes the kids, runs out. The She calls the cops. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. The cops come in. They arrest two clowns. Oh, fuck. One, one was in the living room, sta yeah. standing as a statue. Guess where the other one was? Under the kid's bed, ready to murder it with, oh, with a shit. sharp object in his hand. That's crazy. Fam, under the bed. That's real, like, nightmare shit. Dog, that's like some it No, type real beat. shit. So right now, check under your bed. Oh, my goodness. I... I always did you ever have like the, um those dreams of something under your bed though? Yes, all the time. Why do you think under your bed is such like a Where did that come yeah, from? Yeah, where did that come from? I don't even know. Cause whenever my my foot is over my you know when your foot comes out of your blanket? Yeah. I, I can never feel safe. I put my foot back in the oh, blanket. Oh me too, me too. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I, I always I always fold my blanket. Yep, yep. I always fold it at the end, yo. <laughs> yep, me too. You do that too? <laughs> I thought I was the only one who did no, that. No, I fold I make sure like it, I, I can't I can't be pulled I make sure I do that yeah but where does that come from because I like you know the boogeyman yeah how, under your bed yeah how WWE how he comes out of the ring with like a bunch of worms mm -hmm. that's where I got my first scare of I think I watched this uh, Tagalog movie oh, those like when I was a kid right yeah, yeah. and I think this is kind of a cool concept mm -hmm. but I remember specifically where these monsters okay it's almost like a entrance it's like a portal <laughs> So they would they would crawl from out of the bed to our world, oh but they crawl back in, and then it's like a whole different universe. It's, yeah. it's nothing like what you see. Mm -hmm. Then it's just like Monsters Inc. Oh uh, yeah, Monsters Inc. Oh right? yeah, kind of like Monsters Inc. But yeah. it's like under the bed. Yeah, and it's probably just the unknown. Yeah, it it's is. definitely just the unknown and the darkness. And the darkness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I and mean, yeah, go back back to Pixar, back to Turning Red. Yeah. You know one thing I also noticed. This is my own thing mm -hmm. that um. Abby, yeah. I don't know if you remember her. Who's friend. Abby? Abby, she's like a friend of May. The the chi the Korean girl? Yeah, the Korean girl. Yeah. She's actually Angus from Despicable Me in the future. Wait, Angus? Who's Angus the, again? The, the little girl. The little girl. 
Remember? Oh, Agnes. Oh, Agnes. Agnes. Agnes, Agnes. not Korean. No, but listen, listen. This, yeah. this kind of gives a hint. Okay, okay. Right? So when May, I mean, when Abby saw May in her character form, yeah. what did she say first? You're so fluffy. You're so fluffy. Oh. Well, what's, um, what's Agnes's main thing? You're so fluffy. I'm going to die. Oh. They say it in the exact same tone, too. Yo. To add on to the theory. Okay. What if, what if, what if, uh, what's your name? Abby, you said? Yeah. What is Abby? was so <laughs> scolded by her parents after the situation at the Rogers Center. Yeah. <laughs> at the Sky Dome, bro. Yeah. She was like pressed. Yeah, fam. She ran away from home. Uh-huh. Became an orphan. Ended up at the orphanage. Yo. And then grew, adopted them at no, the orphanage. No. <laughs> That's fucking that That's makes- on the spot. That's on the spot. <laughs> That would have made if, yo if she was younger. I don't know how she like decreases age, but if that was a thing, dog Asian parents. If you're if you're involved with something that big, yep. and you can see, I don't know if you noticed at the end of uh, Turning Red, they're like they had a fundraiser to pay for the Sky Dome wreckage. Okay, yeah, yeah, because they were responsible. So most likely everybody involved had to had to chip put in. a put a bit of that in. You know, yeah, chip in facts. <laughs> oh my god, I, I was I thought you were gonna say like oh Asians don't raisin because we actually don't. <laughs> No, no, not that Asian with strict parents. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> but if you notice, it's like Asians when they're young, they look way younger. It's it's not until like sixty you see the age in Asian. I don't know. It's hard to say. It's hard to yeah, say. It it's hard to say. Because because some Asians look pretty old too. So. Yeah, yeah. But it, it's like it, there's like a there's like a, um a, what do you call it? A line once it gets crossed, you just look hella old. Yeah. But like you look young way before it. Yeah. You know. I th- I think it's the beard too. Because if you notice, um, Jack Harlow has two genius interviews, mm-hmm. and the first one he had no beard, glasses. Yeah. And as soon his glow up was crazy. With a beard. With now a beard. Now his beard, the chains, everything like he. Like no homo, but like he's actually, <laughs> bro's actually this handsome. Guy, this guy's stunning because he looks you sweet. He's nah, like, oh, Jack Harlow. <laughs> bro, Jack Harlow was the biggest <laughs> sex figures in rap right now. Drake, Jack Harlow. I don't know who else. Little baby, little baby. <laughs> <laughs> little baby looks like a fucking chihuahua, fam. <laughs> Yo, show put some respect on little baby. This yeah, guy gets bad. He gets he baddies, gets bad, bro. Yeah. He gets baddies. Bro, if you give me a bunch of chains, I'll get baddies too. It doesn't matter, fam. You know, more times, yeah. Y- you know how I had these podcast moments? I think I'm so used to playing devil's advocate because you played so much around me. Oh, that yeah? Your are getting into arguments with the shorties. Really? <laughs> do you believe that... Uh, some girl asked me, do you believe that there is cheating in the talking stage? My ass, before this podcast, yeah. Um, yeah, I do believe that there is cheating, obviously. In the talking stage? In the talking stage, yeah. But I'm around you so much yeah. that I automatically just, yeah, let's fucking, let's play devil's advocate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Have hella combos where I'm fucking getting paged because she, <laughs> she thinks that there actually isn't. But yeah, no, I do believe that there is cheating. Oh, so you're, you think there is? Yeah, there is. Well, you said there is. No, no, she believes that there is, but I played the opposite, like how you usually do with me. Oh, but I believe there isn't. See? I believe there isn't. I I broke this down with, with Sophia on, on the other podcast oh, yeah? too. Okay. But yo, if you think okay, this is this is my whole thing on, mm-hmm. on it. Mm-hmm. The talking stage, it's like once you put a title, then it becomes secure, right? Yeah, yeah. So prior to that, yeah. you can do whatever you want, fam. And if you can do whatever you want, okay. that also means the equal. Yeah. So she can do whatever she wants. Mm-hmm. So she has all the right in the world. Yeah, to have other options. To have other options and talk to other people. That's exactly what I said. As much as you do, yeah. right? But it gets iffy when one person cares more. More, yeah. When they care more and they have more attachment mm-hmm. and they're only talking to you, yeah. then it becomes something different. And then that's when they want to make it exclusive. That That's your right to want to make yeah. it exclusive. Exactly. But what, what if you have that advanced talking stage and you guys are already moving like a relationship in the talking stage that's cheating right if you do move if you do move past like oh shit like i'm already promising this girl stuff <clears throat> i'm already saying yeah i like you a lot you feel me but you you're still on like the dating app yo okay it depends mm. are you listening to future or drake that day oh because <laughs> look, look no like if, if if you're if you're that type of person where um you you don't care mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> you know what i mean if you're that per- type of person where you don't care and you're living you're living like that yeah and it won't even phase you then shit go ahead do your thing mm-hmm. it's only it's only it's only bad when it affects that other person yeah you know what i mean so it's like you can do what you want yeah but there are repercussions mm-hmm. especially if the other person knows because like in every relationship like you said there's always going to be one person that cares more mm. right that's inevitable yeah yeah, yeah it is it is yeah but 
personally, I believe like you shouldn't. I wouldn't. Mm. I wouldn't. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't unless unless I know she is too. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And I wouldn't just cause that shit's too hard. Like if you're so so focused on one person, what's the point really? Like that's why I was like, why do people cheat in the first place? You can't tell them your your significant other. Oh yeah, I'm not feeling you, right? Mm. But I kind of get it in a way. It's like maybe maybe some people are not emotionally intellectual that i'm mature mm. that they're, they can't even say that to their partner they're just like yeah fuck that guy i'm gonna fuck another guy tonight mm. you know what sophia said on the podcast what did she say i was gonna ask. she said she said okay usually when girls cheat this is what she said okay. she's, she's not generalizing but usually mm-hmm. when girls cheat it's because they're not getting something out of that relationship and they're looking for it with something else but they don't want to destroy what they have which is which is bad cheating is never good yeah cheating is never good Mm -hmm. but she said girls won't just cheat just because like they'll Mm -hmm. cheat because there's already underlying issue i mean yeah it has to be an issue i don't think people are just going around fucking anyone yeah yeah (laughs) and i think that's true unless you're like uh one of those like evil people you yeah. know yeah so some girls some girls too like i asked why he's like sometimes you just don't get good enough dick that you just have to fuck yeah, yeah yeah but the but you love that person so much like um the qualities in that person that mm. it's just the dick game that sucks mm. so you just have to get that from someone yeah, else yeah, yeah. You that, know? honestly more times there's there's a there's a way you can look at it where something could be right but i never i never look at cheating as like it's good never yeah there's there's never a reason you you should and if you're going to that, if you're thinking about that stage or yeah. like doing actions that are sus mm-hmm. onto that level of cheating, bro, that means that's a that's a clear sign. Yeah. You go ahead and break it down with your girl, mm-hmm. break it down with your significant other if you're a girl, and talk about what's bothering you. Mm-hmm. Talk about <laughs> what can you fix. Yeah. And if it can't be fixed, then that's the end of it. Yeah, yeah. Do you because one of my friends was like, um, uh, he got asked the question, what's the number one thing? to a healthy relationship, long-term relationship. He's mm-hmm. like, sex. He's like, what other answer could there be? Communication? Fuck that. Because <laughs> then I was like, I, I actually believe that sex plays a big part in a relationship. It's a big part, but I don't think it's the biggest. Yeah, it's not the biggest, but it plays a big part. Because imagine like, fam, when you're having sex with someone, that's mm-hmm. really soul tying. Mm. You know, you get attached to that person more because you've seen them in their like, I guess their most raw form, mm. you know? I think I disagree though. What? I think I disagree. Are you playing the devil? Acting no, like I think I actually disagree. <laughs> really? Yeah. Okay, and play because I'll, I'll I'll tell mine. So, so you said, you said you see that person in their true form, blah, 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 right? Yeah. Like it's a very primal thing. See somebody naked, like okay. specialty, right? Yeah. Now, would you say you see a lot of people naked if you watch porn? Yeah. Watch porn, yeah. Yeah, you see a lot of people naked when you watch porn. Mm-hmm. Now, is there a special connection to that? No, there's no, because no, I don't know those people. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Right? You don't know those people. Now, but your mind, right? Your mind, uh-huh. your brain doesn't know, oh, this is that person. It just sees titties. Mm-hmm. You get me? Yeah. More times, if you're in if you're in sex mode, yeah. you're not always thinking like, like, oh, this is my girl. <laughs> yeah, you're not, you're not, you know what I mean? You're not, Damn. if if you, if you really break down your psychology, mm-hmm. When you're in yeah, that like, like monster, like you're super, duper. yeah. If you're in like monster mode, <laughs> you feel me? Like That's you're not, you're not thinking about all this and this and this, right? You're just thinking. Depending on who you are, I'm not, I'm not saying everybody, yeah, everybody's the say, same. Uh, depending on who you are, but I think that's why, that's why you see a lot of people like cheating like that mm-hmm. is because sex is no longer a special thing. Yeah. If sex was still a special thing, we would save it till marriage like how they used to do it. But it's not like that anymore. That's it, why a lot of people are having sex like whenever. It's just That's too, why there's a thing called casual sex. That's crazy. There, that's crazy. I don't, I don't believe there's something as casual sex. What? You don't, don't think, think that's a, real? No, I don't think this... Fam, every time... Bro, I'm telling you, you can... You can start acting depressed just because that person you fucked is depressed. Like, there's no such thing as casual because one person in the end will always catch feelings. I don't care how much of a demon. And I don't believe, like, oh, people are demons. I don't know why everyone wants to be labeled as a demon. Because before, if you were a demon, like, you were going doing some crazy shit. But everyone now is like, oh, I fuck this girl. I'm a demon. You know? It I don't think it, it's cool. It's not cool. I don't think it's fucking it's cool. cool. <laughs> but I think I think people do it, though. Yeah, I know. I think casual sex is a thing. Like, that ass? I, that's a whole culture, bro. No, that's bro, what That's what Tinder and all of these accounts, they're... Fam, if you really take it in, like... Yeah. Maybe because I, I, I have female friends that, that show me... Uh-huh. That show me their messages and, with people. And they've never, like... So they just do it off the fact that, yeah, I just want sex from them. Yes. And they don't catch no feeling. Yes. Like, but when you're having sex, don't you catch one fe- at least one feeling. Like- I'm going to tell you something. I'm okay. going to tell you something. <laughs> when it comes to the point where, where like, 
you smash a lot of people and yeah. like you've done your rounds yeah it's different you, if you if you've done your rounds it's different <laughs> yeah like they'll go ahead they'll go ahead and have their fun okay and that's not that's not a bad thing it's never there's no wrong here there's no wrong it's only wrong if they're cheating yeah okay. you know what i mean there's only yeah. but if you're having casual like you know yeah that's kind of the culture now Damn, and I, as sad as that is as yeah. sad as that is that's what it is and if you want to if you want to live in today's society it's dangerous to have those feelings right away mm -hmm. you know what i mean yeah. but you're allowed to have those feelings like that's that's what's troublesome that's why so much people get into like, like the depression toxic, yeah the toxic and shit. toxic yeah like you're allowed to have those feelings because mm -hmm. we're meant to have those feelings when you have sex with somebody you're yeah. meant your your biological freaking instincts will make you want to do that yeah. but it just sucks that um the the society we live and like yeah. the culture is that do you think this generation promotes more toxic relationships like they they like that shit because whenever you see on tiktok oh uh toxic this toxic that you know and tinder now it's getting more popularized casual sex everywhere as you said as you were saying i think i feel like me personally there has to be a balance if you want a good relationship mm. there always has to be that toxic but like not crazy like oh i'm gonna key his car if he does this to me like mm. you have to throw and you have to be comfortable with your partner being toxic like being toxic that's perfect not a lot but like perfect <laughs> i don't think talk i don't think being toxic at all is good yeah obviously but, but there's no perfect relationship if you believe that then that's crazy no i think a perfect relationship is is a yin and yang though yeah the yin and yang the is, balance is the balance but i don't think you could call it toxic i just want to say because there's lines right mm -hmm. there, there's there's a line where you would call something toxic yeah. but if something toxic happens to you you shouldn't you shouldn't allow that mm -hmm. you should never allow that yeah. but if something small where it's like a it's like a, a bothersome mm -hmm. thing, then just allow it because you love that person. Yeah, yeah. Like it, it's it's those type of it's those type of um, sacrifices yeah. and boundaries, right? Mm -hmm. But when it comes to like something toxic where it's affecting your mental health or it's um it's putting a toll on how you want to live, mm -hmm. that's different. That's that's completely different. Yeah. Because then people get in, they, they get trapped into a relationship. Mm -hmm. They get locked into like, I gotta be with them because I don't think I can get somebody else. I gotta be with them because because uh they're too good, blah, 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 this and that, right? Mm -hmm. Now, if you're stuck in that, that like Bubble. loop, yeah. if you're stuck in that loop, that's toxic because how are you gonna get out? <laughs> yeah. How do you, how you do you escape? How do you escape? You can't. How do you, how do you fix your mental health from yeah. that, right? Yeah. You can't. I don't think anyone's more so emotionally intelligent to be like, Oh, this is how I'm escape. They're gonna do it in like way more toxic ways. So mm. that's that's where where cheating comes. That's where you know all the lies come in, stuff like that. True. I yeah, I agree. Yeah, I agree. I think that's what happens. That's, that's the loop. That's the loop. That's the loop, and it just and becomes then, darker and, it, and darker. And then it ends at one point. But overall, I don't think um, it's promoted. I don't. Really? I don't think it's promoted. I just think we as as. As a population, we've decided to do that. To do it, to normalize it. I don't think it's promoted though. I, I think feel like it is just because it's on everyone's, especially on TikTok. It's a really, the age limit is very small. I mean, like it's little kids looking at that shit. So they grow up looking at, oh, uh, toxic this, toxic that. I, okay. It's, well, I think it's only promoted is because, because that's what it is. Yeah. That's what it is. Because when, um, little Dirk. Yeah. Oh, I said little, little Dirk. Yeah. Did something nice. Like the the easiest thing like gave uh, india flowers mm. everyone was like yo he's the goat like <laughs> like i think the bar is so low in our yeah. generation you do the bare minimum and a girl will love you it's so crazy that's what i said i was trying to get out because i i don't want to say it's promoted i think it's just like what it is right now yeah i i don't know i don't know because it's not like it's not like we don't have um uh, movies and television yeah, of couples of of the 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 what do you call it? The dream. Dream, yeah. The dream, the romantic dream, whatever. Because mm -hmm. we have that. Yeah. We have that. And honestly, that's promoted a lot. But yeah. we've taken a different step. Exactly. And as as a, as a population, we've decided this is what we're going to do. Yeah, that's why all the directors go into make a film movie with like the lovey-dovey shit. Because people want that shit. They yeah, but that's what that they dream. make. That's yeah. what they make. Yeah. So what if you make the opposite? Oh, like euphoria. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Completely, exactly. Completely, uh, yeah, you're right. You you're make right. the opposite and that will shock the world. Yeah. That's why euphoria did a really good hit. job because it shows the dark side of it and it shows it shows us exactly what's toxic there. Yeah. You get me? True. Because if you watch like a regular love show, blah, blah, blah. It's not realistic. It's not realistic mm -hmm. and you don't get to see um what's right from wrong. Mm, you're right. You, you can't tell me, you can't tell me you watch like, um like, 
crazy stupid love and then see what's right from wrong. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, you, you, you don't. It's all right. It's all right. Yeah, yeah. Everything is all right because at the end, it's happy. <laughs> you for all wrong. Yeah, you know, you know what's right and wrong because you're yeah. able to decipher that because you yeah. see what's going on. Damn, I didn't notice that. That's a cool little. Yeah, you got to break stuff down like that. Yo, that's a. I want to teach people mm-hmm. how to how to think like that. That's fact. Because in anything in life, you want to be able to decipher, okay, um, this moment happened. How can I learn from it? Mm-hmm. What can I take from it? How can I better myself? Yeah. Want to end on that? Uh, yeah. yeah okay. 113 we'll let, is crazy. Yeah, okay. We'll end it on that. <laughs> All right. Thank you everyone for watching this episode of Jumpers Jump yes, Podcast. Sir. Make sure you guys check out the links in our bio. Follow us on Instagram. Comment, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Uh, go listen to Spotify, Apple, all that. Um, Stay tuned for Oxwords. I'm going to yes, drop this sir. soon. That's you guys will be able to play this. Mm-hmm. And yeah, Jumpers Jump out. Deuces.